All right, I'm excited. We've got our next guest here, one of the legends of legends. That how long have we known each other, Simon? For uh, um, how many books have you written before your first book yeah. that came out? Right, well, before your first book, which was four years ago, but we did it probably two years before that. So if I'm guessing, and I'm going to take a stab here, I'd say about six years. This guy right here was one of those people when I started really like trying to make waves and create waves and do stuff. I really wanted to be on his podcast. He is the number one podcast in network marketing. How many downloads now? We lost track. We had just stopped. Uh, <laughs> there's been millions. Millions. Okay. Once again, yeah, millions. millions. It's like, what's the you difference? know what? I really appreciate You know what you've done is very inspiring. And I actually want to answer that question. You said how many, uh, how how long have we known each other? You were, I think, on the first year of uh, when we first came out on the on the podcast. Simon's looking it up right now. I'm looking at it right now. He's like so I, he wants to know it to be one of those things. But he, I aspired like literally. It was one of those things. And I remember reaching out to you. I, this just came to me right now. I didn't remember this till I said this, uh, or until I'm saying this now. And I remember reaching out to you. Like it was like, what do I say? How do I get on this podcast? And so I reached out. I'm like, hey, like. You know, I'd love if I could be featured, you know, I, can I send you a bio? And you were really nice. You're like, no, I know who you are. You're like, you're good. And then we went on and we did it. And then we did a follow-up one with the Game of Networking launching. And so we've done either two or three on it, which has been phenomenal. And I mean, you were the first one that really focused on it before I even really knew what podcasts were. And uh, now you've had over 600 guests in your podcast. And the great part is, is you're not just doing a podcast you previously you stopped building years ago like eight years ago but you built a team that had over two hundred thousand people and so you understand both sides of what it takes to build and contrary to what people may think actually sometimes when you transition to coaching i was scared for me personally that i wasn't going to be in the trenches and i was going to lose sight of things i actually feel like i'm learning more than ever before because all these leaders that i'm interviewing are sharing sharing Right, their secret sauce tips yeah. and strategies, isn't it crazy? Yeah, well, you know, I actually looked it up. Um, it's this is coming up to season eight coming up. So we started ML Nation 2015. You're episode 176. So it's been over almost, almost seven years, Rob. And I remember, and here's a you know message for the listeners: um, is that your network determines your net worth. Right, it's all about who you know, and it's more important. Some people think it's like, oh. And you talk about this in your book, excellent, in Game of Networking. Uh, some people think it's like, oh, it's how many people you know. It's actually how many people know of you that matters. Because you may know a million people, but those people don't even think about you. Or, you know, if they have a need for your product, they're not even thinking about you. They're thinking about going to Costco first, whatever. Then you're doing a bad, bad job of networking. And uh, I remember back then, I was like, first of all, who's Rob Sperry? But you had excellent uh, people that vouch for you. And I was like, all right, this guy... Uh, well, you're just getting started. What you had all this years of uh, network marketing experience, and uh, a couple of leaders say that Rob is a cool guy, so we had you on the show. And since then, it's been fun. It's uh, you know, become friends and been able to travel to different events and hang out. And I remember, I, I just like things come to my mind. I remember little things like getting a text randomly like three years ago from Simon. He's like, I think I'm like the most disciplined person until I think about you, and then I'm like, maybe. <laughs> Right. That was like out of the blue just years ago. So it's just been fun to see it. We're both, you know, uh, coaches for our kids. Uh, my favorite quote or mantra is die with memories, not with dreams. And we're always sharing how important that is to us. And that's why we do what we do. And that's the real dream. But with you, you've interviewed so many. You've had so much experience from the building side, but then also being around so many successful people that have become friends and learning and you got all different types of styles and personalities and interviews. Um, as you do this, are there any specific commonalities that you've started to draw from doing these interviews of, cause I know that techniques are different, right? Yeah. But principles are timeless. Are there certain specific principles that really stand out that I don't know if we can say all successful people have or most that aren't lucky, we could say all have. Yeah, well, d definitely. Uh, one of the things I always ask on the show, uh, and they've all agreed now with over like 700 episodes, is that consistency is the number one skill. Because it doesn't matter what technique you're doing 
or whether you're doing, you know, TikTok videos or you're doing face to face meetings or you're doing hotel meetings. If you're not doing it consistently, uh, you're never going to make it and consistently specifically working on the income, the DMO, the income producing activities and not getting into management mode. Right. I've also seen a lot of the I think you've seen the two where people have success for a short amount of time. Um, and these are normally people who just get into network marketing and it happened to me as well. I'm sure you made a mistake. You get you get excited. Uh, and I remember your story. You made a lot of money and obviously you made nothing. Right. Yep. It's like you, you think that oh, I, I, I recruited four people uh, in the first month and these four is going to turn to 16 and 16 is going to turn to 64. And then in, in three years, I never have to work again. But it's more like you recruit 20 and 19 quit. Right. And what so people get into management mode and top leaders, they consistently recruit and never stop recruiting. Um, leaders also invest in themselves. Uh, like you invest in yourself. I invest in myself, meaning they don't necessarily like there's different levels of investing in yourself. Like the, the, the cheapest way, right? If you don't have it's like go to YouTube and or listen to podcasts, right? This is a good way, right? And then the more the leaders who really know it, they spend money. They may buy a book. That's the next level. Uh, by the way, the first book I ever bought was Zig Ziglar Selling 101 back in 2004. Okay. And the reason I bought it, <laughs> Rob, was because it was the cheapest book out there at that time. It was like eight ninety five. dollars <laughs> I, I would spend, I would spend $15 or like $50 to hang out and party at a club. I was too cheap to spend more than $10 on the book. But, uh, but leaders, they buy books. They attend events. Right. And then they invest in coaches. The t people are top leaders. Doesn't matter like uh, whether they want to later on to go into real estate or get into crypto. They, they hire coaches. That's a shortcut to success. Um, and then I think the, another thing about the leaders is no one's really lucky. Yeah. Right. You see, they've all paid the price for success somewhere. You know, I always believe 95 percent of success is the mindset. Right. It's something in the background. So you see someone like uh, like yourself, you uh, you're very successful. Right. But no one knows your first year in network marketing. You're miserable. You you had it and you quit way too early to go full time or the pain. I'm sure I can't even imagine the mental stress, the debt you were in. But it, it was not to mention in the you mentioned in your book about that personal tragedy you had with your family members and your tennis all the stuff. You played college tennis all that stress and pressure it's like the diamond made you who you were where you are right and every leader has that story i had that my story where i struggled and peace so people see the success they say oh everyone loves the glory but they don't like the story the story behind that so you see someone oh, he made six figures in six months wow but did you know in his previous career uh he struggled or he grew up without a father and mom and he grew up himself or he lost five thousand dollars at 16 they had to make you don't know that it's all these the, like I said, the worst moments are the raw materials for your future success. That is what makes you to su being successful, right? And I think looking back, um, I share one personal thing about me was, you now I, I love my parents very much, appreciate them, really grateful for them. But they were, I grew up in an upper middle class family. I was, I went to a public school, but I was the richest kid. And because my dad was rags to riches. He grew up really poor in Hong Kong was five, you know, six siblings living in a tiny two bedroom uh, apartment in the ghetto. Uh, but then all six siblings either became a doctor, Cairo or engineers, all college grad. They made it right. So when my parents raised me and my mom was the same way, escaped from Hong Kong, went to escape from China, communist China, went to Hong Kong with no money on a little boat. When we were raised, we had a lot of things that we didn't have to work as hard for. Like I didn't need to work. I was like a spoiled kid almost. I didn't need to work for money. As long as it did well in school, I got what I had. But looking back, you know, as a kid, I was like, I had it easy. Looking back, that made me weak. You know, when I was in my mid twenties, uh, all my friends who had a much tougher became way, way more successful than I was. And I was kind of like the, among my friends, um, like the black sheep, you know? And I thought about college. I never learned anything in college. The, the thing that helped me most in college was my network. I mean, I was in my, and that's actually motivated me in net, network marketing. I look at like all my friends in college, they're way more successful. I had a friend that made a million, it was making a million a year by 25. Another friend that was a portfolio manager and I'm making like $50,000 happy at a job. I'm like, oh my God, I'm a loser, right? I have another friend like investing in condos. That's like three properties at 26. Because they went through when they were growing up, they had a tougher. They had a tougher, so they developed the mental toughness. 
and the courage to go outside the comfort zone while I was like sitting there just having a job, you know, taking it easy. Uh, but anyway, that's a long story about that. Uh, and again, uh, I, nothing against my parents, but that's why I do my best as a parent. Like you want to give it easy, but you want to make it tough for them so they grow. It's so hard as a parent, right? Because you're just like, you want to teach them. And I think the biggest thing I've learned as a parent is perspective. Uh, because no matter how much you give them, there's always someone that's giving their kids a ton more. And no matter how little, right, you give them, there's always kids that are getting much less. And there's always kids that have a ton that, you know, don't have success and some that do and vice versa. But I'm going to tell you, hold this. I'm going to tell you this real quickly. And then I want you guys to hear it because it's about freaking time. Simon was actually one of the people when I was going to come out with my book and I reached out and I'm like, tell me about it. He probably doesn't even remember this conversation. Actually does because he has as good of memory or better than I do based on the things he's sharing. But I reached out to him and you actually gave me the example of Russell Brunson and his book and how he used it and the purpose of it, different things. And I was really scared, really scared. And he's finally, after all these interviews and a wealth of knowledge, as you just heard this guy speak, he's finally coming out with a book, which I am just jacked out of my, so we're going to hear about that. That's like the teaser in just a second, pay attention, but you you probably, I don't know if you've seen this yet, but I, I just posted about this, but I just started uh, a program where my son and his friends, they're juniors in high school, and my daughter's a freshman, and my niece, um, who's a junior, or she's a sophomore, they are coming over, and I'm teaching them all about success, and they thought it was just money. Of course, we're going to talk about money, but I'm teaching them the purpose of money, creating those incredible relationships and connections, and now I'm coaching high school tennis for free because of it. Now I do seven family vacations minimum a year and how my mantra is die with memories, not with dreams. And I'm sharing with real numbers. So I brought a guy over that sold his business for 10 million and now makes like a million and a half a year. Uh, they've got someone else that's coming uh, next week. That's a world body. Uh, he's like a world champion lifter, seven time world champion lifter. And he's also a public speaker. They've got the number one coach for the door to door industry in three weeks. These kids are jacked out of their minds. So Wednesday night was the first night. The next day, one of the kids that's never read a personal development book, he went through my book and uh, he's halfway through and he sent me this long text of all of his insights and perspective on overcoming fear and managing time. And I just thought like the things we talk about, I mean, that's what this is about. So I understand you all are going to have your doubts and it's, can I do it? Is it worth it? Can I do it? Is it worth it? I'm telling you the amount of people that Simon's interviewed and I've interviewed, we've seen all different styles, personalities, walks of life. You can do this. Stop doubting yourself. You're wasting your focus. You're wasting mental energy. And Simon's the one that always says it. Mindset will eat skills and systems for breakfast. That's where it all starts. It doesn't matter the skills you learn if you don't have the mindset. So with all this wealth and knowledge, Tell us, and I got some more questions for you, but before I, before I forget, like most important thing is, is I want everybody to get your book. Where can they get your book? Tell us, tell us like the story behind the story. Cause years ago, you're just kind of like, yeah, I'm not going to write a book. And I was, I was a little bummed. I was like, come on, Simon. And now finally, finally we get it. And I, I, I hope to get my copy here ASAP. Well, you're definitely going to get yours. <clears throat> and, um, I appreciate you for featuring uh, me in your book, The Game of Networking, uh, which, by the way, I recently just did a post uh, out of 700 interviews based on what leaders recommended. That was one of the top 10 books, most recommended books oh. by leaders, The Game of Networking by Rob Sperry. So uh, excellent, excellent nuggets there. Uh, it's kind of like the, how to win friends with influence people for network markers. Um, so let's talk about the, um, the I just want to share something that you mentioned that you can do it, right? I share with you about how my parents and the mindset, and it is like Rob what said is true. You can change, right? I, I didn't have like the, you know, I didn't have, a, I had an easy childhood compared to what Rob went through. But and so when I first started network marketing, I struggled because the mindset wasn't there, right? I was more from an employee mindset. Uh, I didn't know anything about a law of abundance, attraction marketing, uh, being positive thinking i know i was very cynical actually and i was very close to my late grandparents i love them but my grandmother was kind of cynical and that got me that that was me i was very negative very cynical very being growing up in brooklyn new york that's adds to a lot of skepticism but you can all change right but change doesn't happen overnight it happens a little bit 
every day. So if you're listening to this, you can change, but you got to change what's between your two years, your mindset before you get the money change. And that's what Jim Rohn says. If you want to change my lead if you want to change your income to change, you must change. If you want things to get better, you must get better. All right. So ask yourself, uh, like you talk about perspective, in what ways do you need to change? Right. Maybe it's like fear uh, going out there or worry about what people think about you. Right. This, the list goes on and on. You got to think about, I want you to think, you're listening to this, in what areas do you need to change? Now, change that happens small, but it's something you got to push every single day, get a little bit better. And that's actually leading to the book was, after being the profession for almost 20 years now, I got started in 2003. Um, there's tons of books out there and all that stuff. There's actually more trainings now than ever. I mean, it's just incredible, the resources there. But people still struggle. And it's because of the number one skill that people talk about uh, or the leadership is consistency, right? Lack of consistency. So that's what motivated me the book because no matter what trainings you have, what tools, uh, like just look at the game of networking, what you have done, Rob, right? The other leaders, the other trainers have done. There's so much out there, but people still struggle because of lack of consistency. So this is the book, you know, um, when I text you, I said you're the one of the most disciplined people. I thought, you know what? We all know, I think everyone knows that consistency is important, but most, most people don't do it, right? So um, people say, I'm one of the most consistent people. So I start thinking, what, how do I think, what are some things I do that help me become consistent? So I started breaking down from the mindset, right? Like, for example, uh, getting over rejection. I have a certain thing I do that helps me call it a rejection killer, which I talk about in the book. The, all the experience formula, right? How to get over uh, someone says no to you. So I took all these mindset hacks I do, there's the self-talk, wrote it down. Also talk about it as a seven-step system to being consistent. And so, so one of them I'll share with you is in order to, to uh, do something, like we're all consistent. If you're watching this, you're listening to this, you're consistent in some part, in different some part in your life. It doesn't matter how inconsistent you are. There are parts you know, like By you're By the way, I think that was one of the most popular posts that's ever been posted in the game of networking. You posted one on like, it was, it was like how to focus daily method of operation and you were giving your whole system. So you guys are you yeah. guys are lucky when you get to hear it, like someone actually explain it like this because people were just going crazy over it. Yeah. And so part the number one is you got to create the time, right? So it's a seven step system. I don't have time to go through or some, but one of them is create the time and every, everyone, everything you're doing consistently. Like for example, Rob, I know you took a shower in the last 24 hours. You do it consistently. You create a time. There's a specific time you do. There's a routine, right? If you make your coffee, there's a routine. If you you brush your teeth every day, right? You're listening to this. I'm sure you brush your teeth. If you didn't, go brush your teeth. But there's a specific time a day you do all these things. If you work out consistently, there's a specific time. And if you ever to ask people, like, do you exercise or work out? Oh, yeah. When? When? He's like, oh, when I, when I have time. You know that person doesn't exercise consistently. Right, because no, so you got to create that time. So basically, the book breaks down to all these little things. I really feel it's like the missing supplement, you know, to uh, success in network marketing and in, in any type of sales. It breaks down exactly what you have to do. Uh, but I thought it was a long do, long time coming. Uh, it took me a while to get it out, and I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited for it. Yeah, books are so incredibly difficult. Anyone who's written a book knows it. It's a lot harder than you think. I mean, pumping out a speech or something you think is hard. This is that times a hundred because it's like every little word, it could be interpreted this way. And it's just, it's just so different as you're doing research and trying to find flow as, as you go, where can people find your book? Easiest way to, uh, you can just go on Amazon. Uh, Amazon just put the Simon Chan or consistency pill, uh, but I got some freebies and bonuses. Yeah. Uh, a lot of cool of them, whether it's like a companion workbook, uh, even an audio book, if you get it to hear this in time, um, a lot of freebies. Go go to Amazon, and then afterwards go to the consistencypill.com, and then you see where you can claim your bonuses. That's great. Now, one of the other things I like is because there's a lot of mis, um, you know, common perceptions of how to do this, and you and I always talk about how most people write. It's a lot of just fake work and. Um, you always talk about like the consistency, but of course, you know, people have to be very deliberate in how they're consistent. What are some of your, your hacks to help somebody that's a part timer? Like, let's say I'm coming to you, Simon. I know you do a lot of personal coaching. He's an incredible personal coach, by the way. 
And I come to you and I'm like, Simon, I really want to make this thing happen. I got big goals. I'm willing to do whatever it takes, but I've got six hours a week. So I got four kids I got to take care of. And I got this and this and this and this six hours a week. How can I really actually build this business part-time? Is it, is, are people just telling me this because they want me to help their business and it's not really possible? Like, could I do this? How can I do that? Yeah, you absolutely can. Don't, you know, you only got six hours. Time is not your friend. It's like your enemy, right? So part of like the extreme, I talk about in the book, the extreme productivity regimen, time management regimen is that you got to safeguard your time. So you work off a checklist. That's number one. That's very important. You got to work off a checklist because when you wake up, you can't be like, oh, what am I going to do today? Uh, who should I follow up with? I mean, before you know, you just wasted, you know, you wasted five minutes. That's five minutes you got connected with five people, right? So the night before you plan your day and plan out your prospects, you have a bullet point of it. Okay, these are the 20 people I'm going to reach out to, right? Because when at night, normally you're tired, you, you can always sleep five minutes less, you plan it out. So when you're, you know, when you're working, just say, I'll give you a great example. On uh, my kids are napping, I got like 30 minutes to work. Or I just dropped off my kid off 15 minutes before they come out of school, whatever, right? I dropped them off practice. I got to go somewhere. I'll have 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You don't want to be wasting your time thinking, oh, what should I be doing? Who should I reach out to? You grab out your list and go bam, 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 production mode. <clears throat> That's number one. I'll work off a list. Number two is create a specific time. I, I just talked about that before. Like if you want to exercise consistently, you got to set a specific time. So the specific time can be waking in the first thing in the morning, which I highly recommend, or it could be in between, you know, your kid, your child, your kid is napping or after you're waiting in the car, waiting for your kid to get off the school, specific time where you can get 10, 15 minutes done. Okay, you don't need that much time, but you need to be focused. This is the time when you have high energy. You don't want to be wasting. Let me scroll on the feed or let me scroll through my messenger, see who I haven't talked to in a while. That's a waste of time. Yeah. Right. I'll creating social media. It's not like, again, creating that routine. It's not like, oh, uh, what should I post today? Uh, uh, and then you like 30 minutes have gone by. You're scrolling on the feed. And then instead, hey, take a time in the weekend. Plan, think about five or six things that you've learned. You want to give and share back. Write them down and start thinking. Thinking about it, and then you batch the ideas. So, there's a couple of hacks I've given. I have a lot of, more in the book, uh, but every one of you can do it. It doesn't take much time. How I got started, when my turning point uh, for network marketing, I struggled for months, was when I had someone push me to be consistent. And for me, at that time, it was 4:30 p.m. at my job. I could spend 15, 20 minutes at that time to go prospect and send a couple of message. And as I did, got more of it. I got more brave. I, I, I went on lunch break. I did another 15, 30 minutes. And you slowly add more and more and more. And the last T is just start small. You don't need to go all out. People want to be from zero to hero, right? Like, oh, I, I haven't done anything. Oh, tomorrow I'm going to send out 50 messages. That's probably not going to happen. It's, it's like the same person, like, I haven't worked out. I'm going to go to the gym and hit it hard. Yeah, you work out for two hours. You can't move your arms and lift your arms for two weeks. And then you never go back. So start small and be patient with yourself and focus every day to get a little bit, a little bit better. So crazy how the most important things in our life, we always plan out, we've got completely scheduled. And then, you know, it's the most important thing in your business, but then your leader reaches out and says, Hey, what time are you reaching out to people tomorrow for how long and who? And 99%, that's my made up statistic. That's probably accurate. Don't actually know. It's just, they're just like, Oh, I'm going to try. And they don't make it happen. I mean, I'm thinking of the movie, The Pursuit of Happiness, right? Like that movie, right? He's obsessed with time to the point of managing how much water he drinks because he doesn't want to waste restroom breaks as he goes. And I just, uh, Simon's the same. Him and I, you know, coaching our kids, we've become obsessed with time. It's the most valuable thing we have on this earth. I mean, to the point of last year, I created a goal of doubling my income and working 25 hours a week. I didn't double it. I, it went up by 60% though, which is still great. And I only worked 25 hours a week. So I thought I got to think differently. So now I feel like I'm like sliding with my business socks across, like I eat lunch and then I got 15 minutes and then I'm sliding back. Like I'm trying to get things done, go, 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 where it's almost fun. And I think that's a common thing you and I have seen of a lot of people think it's the lack of time, but most people that are working this business 20 hours a week could get done what they need to get done in five or six yes it's right. never the it's not the lack of time it's the lack of time management right um that's why it's a big part of the consistent feel in the book and 
you know, because time you can never get back. Money you can always get back. Time you can never get back. And you talk about people planning. People will like worry about, oh, my Netflix bill or like this bill went up like five, ten dollars and spending all the time trying to fight it back. Hey, you spend that amount of time, you can sign up a couple of leaders in your business. But how much is your time worth? Time you can always get money back, but you can never get time back. How much is your time worth? I love that question. And here's a good question. This was a game changer when someone taught me this, right? So think about how I want everyone to listen. Listen, think about this. How much are you worth per hour? Yeah. Right. And so you don't you you like oh network marketing? How does this make sense? We just think about how much money you want to make. Say you want to make a hundred thousand a year, right? If you you want to make a hundred thousand a year, you're worth fifty dollars an hour. So it comes back to if you're working forty hours a week. You get paid fifty dollars an hour. That's for every hundred grand is fifty dollars. So um, I'm gonna go and mow my lawn, right? So if you mow your lawn, how long is it gonna take? An hour. Well, that costs you fifty dollars. Would you pay someone fifty dollars? No, I, I, my garden does it for fifteen dollars. He gets it done in fifteen minutes, right? So when you start thinking about, oh, I'm on, I'm on the phone with my uh, my uh, cell phone company to get the back ten dollars, but you're on there for thirty minutes. That costs you twenty-five dollars to get back ten dollars. Right? If you want to get paid six figures, you got to do six-figure work, and that all goes back to the income-producing activities, working on that checklist, staying focused. I love it. I think it's such a powerful question. I remember the same thing first time I was asked that, and I started realizing it. It was tough for me. I don't know if it was a guilt thing or what it was, or it's like the program we have is we're going up, but it was like you feel like you're supposed to do things. And for me, yeah, I've got someone that comes and does my pool and something like, well, yeah, I wish I could afford that. Well, that's part of the reason why I can though, because the mindset I had was valuing my time. I didn't just outsource things and then not work. That's the mm. key, right? I outsource and then it was insanely deliberate. I have someone that comes and does my yard. I have somebody now that comes and, and uh, details uh, my car once a month, because for me, I'm so obsessed of, I'm going to spend time with here's the best way to say it. I would rather spend time with things I love than things I like or don't like. So I love working because it's creating an impact and a legacy. I love spending time with my family and friends. I love helping out my community. So I am going to invest my time in my loves and I'm give up some of my likes so I can obsess with my loves. And I think when I had that reassociation, yeah, at first it was like, people were like, oh, well, you can do this because of that. And they judge you. And it's just like, yeah, people are going to judge you no matter what. You're too fat. You're yeah. too skinny, right? You approach them too soon. You approach them too late. Like, that's what they do, right? Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, you asked me if I was working, uh, coaching with someone, one of the first things I tell them to do is make a no list, right? Give up list. Um we all like to add things to a checklist, but we don't like to give up things. So if you want to achieve success in network marketing, the reality is you're not you're not going to have more time. God's not giving you five extra hours. You need to say no to a lot of things. And that's for short term, right? You made the sacrifices, Rob. I see I had to make the sacrifices. You got to say no to things because otherwise you're never going to have the time. And so think about like, what are some things you got to say no to? And, you know, getting back to the uh, mowing the lawn, uh, if you enjoy it, then sure. But you know what? Then again, but then again, you may, that may be something you have to give up enjoy. Right? I give up a lot of things I enjoyed. Uh, you know, we talk about our coaching and stuff. I've, I have spent an average of 20 hours. You're on the tennis court. I spent an average of like 15 to 20 hours, sometimes even more, on the baseball field between tournaments. Right? The reason I did that was for like... Five, 10 years, almost 10 years. I didn't do any of that stuff. I didn't follow any of sports because I was focused on building my network marketing business and then the ML Nation. Right now I can do all the stuff I do, baseball, car, like all that stuff. So you have to pay the price. If you don't pay the price today, eventually, eventually you're always going to have to pay the price. So you might as well pay the price now so you can enjoy what you want to do later. It's so important. Uh, last thing I'll say is this is, what you're saying, they're just flood of memories. So when I first started this profession, I started out with a guy that's made over $30 million in the profession, but he's not on social media and changes his phone number every year. So he's like a ghost, like legit a ghost, just a legend, been in the profession forever. And uh, he's the one that got me started. And he says to me, his name's Lon Wardrop. And he says to me this, he's like, Rob, he says, you're going to make a ton of sacrifices at the beginning. 
He said, but guess what? He said, for me, every day is a birthday now. Every day is an anniversary. Every day is whatever I want it to be. And that just like blew my mind. And he's like, I want to go to the movies. He's like, yeah, today I decided to go at, yeah, at noon because no one else is there because everyone else is working. He said, so, you know, that gave me so much vision and perspective, but he gave me the perspective like you just gave of, but you got to earn it, right? Too many people want to have the dream and they haven't earned the dream. And so it becomes a nightmare. You got to earn the dream. I'm telling you guys, Simon's one of the best of the best human beings, one of the best of the best leaders, coaches, and now author, which is absolutely phenomenal. I, I can tell you already without reading the book, just knowing him, who he is and his content, that you're going to love the book. I'm excited to get my copy. I still am always an avid reader because I'm an avid learner. Um, I, I listen or read books all the time and study because the ability to learn how to learn is the greatest ability one can have. So make sure you follow him on social media. Make sure you get his book and make sure more importantly that you actually take action on his book and make it happen. Simon, thanks so much for being on, my man. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you so much. And last thing, you're one of the most consistent people I know, Rob. Hats out to you. I still remember the first time we met, you had that background that calendar and you you know seven years later you still have it that's consistent branding i love it you thank you for being such a great friend for everything you do and like everyone listening remember um make sure you apply what we what you learned if you didn't apply it you just wasted our time rob's time my time most important your time so make sure you take action go check out the book consistencypill.com and go out there and have a positive impact on someone's life god bless you all